We'll, we'll jump right into it and I actually would like to do a follow-up talking about the jurisdiction issues that we have um, between the SEC and um, CFTC. So it, in your testimony, you had discussed the importance of not undermining existing laws, most notably the securities law and the jurisdiction of the SEC. I, I think you've already outlined why you think this is important, but the discussion draft does not amend the definition of securities, but it does set up a process to help market participants work with the SEC to determine when an asset is no longer part of an investment contract. Does that modification disrupt the SEC's authority to protect customers and address information gaps between digital asset issuers and investors? Congresswoman, thanks for the question. And just a little bit of context before I answer the question more directly, um, and I said this earlier, um, we're not here because we're trying to, you know, it, this is not a zero sum game. And what I mean by that is if this committee and the Congress were to provide the CFTC with more authority over the cash commodity markets, we're not pulling that authority from another agency, the SEC or otherwise. It doesn't exist. There's a vacuum. No one regulates cash commodity markets. And I think this is the most important thing this committee should think about and has thought about as it drafts or continues to work on this draft bill. As it relates to the SEC, I was very intentional, obviously, in including that statement or that, that sentence in the statement. We have a very robust, very effective, very impactful set of laws around markets in the United States, both on the commodity side and on the security side. And what I would not want to see is this bill or any bill addressing digital assets undermine existing law. And I'm not suggesting the bill does. Um, and to now turn to a more direct answer to your question uh, is I, I do think, you know, we haven't had too much time with the bill, but more importantly, I would just encourage you and your colleagues to work closely with the SEC to ensure that the bill does not undermine the securities laws. And I know that is not your intention, but with legislation comes unintended consequences, and I think we should always be very mindful of what we do, what we're intending, and what the outcomes are. Thank you. Um, and I know that FTX has been touched on quite a bit here today, um, but I wanted to make sure that um, I just did a quick follow-up on that. Uh, if there's no federal oversight of digital commodity interme intermediaries and exchanges, if Congress doesn't act, is the CFTC's anti-fraud and anti-manipulation authority sufficient currently to prevent an FTX-like debacle, like what we saw in the U.S. cash or spot digital commodity markets? Short answer, Congresswoman, is, the, is no. And I, I've said this many times, but it might not happen next month, it might not happen next year, but if we continue to, to keep status quo, um, these markets will rise and fall in value, and uh, these implosions, bankruptcies will uh, occur again. It's an interesting perspective, me being someone who is very much against uh, the heavy hand of government bureaucrats and, and regulators. You know, it tends to have one extreme to the other. So there's been criticisms that uh, CFTC is a bit of a light touch, right? How do you strike that balance? Well, uh, you know, I obviously don't uh, agree with that statement at all, and, and my thought is folks who want to... You could take it as a compliment. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would say that I've, I've thought about this, and this is just a product of individuals who, you know, they're pundits, they want to be critics, this is what they do, uh, but also just not willing to take time and to really examine... Uh, the agency and the impact that we have on financial markets. And I'll briefly give you two examples, one on enforcement. I've said this multiple times. Last fiscal year, 2022, uh, 300, $320 million budget, $2.5 billion in penalties and restitution. Eight times return, uh, roughly. Um, over the past 10 years, consistent factor, eight times return on our appropriated dollar. So every dollar you appropriate, we're returning $8 to the general treasury. Second thing I will say, and I mentioned this earlier, we are a principles-based regulator. So I think it's easy for critics, which there are always critics, to say, oh, they're a, quote, light touch regulator because they're a principles-based regulator. That couldn't be farther from the truth. And as I said earlier, we, in fact, through the law, the Commodity Exchange Act, are a principles-based regulator. But if you look at our statute, and to your point earlier, uh, the rules that we draft, driven from the law, are quite extensive, are more prescriptive, 
and are very specific to protecting customers and protecting markets. So we are the farthest thing from a light touch regulator. And I think if you ask any of our registrants what they would say, I think they would agree with that. Well, and I had a couple follow-ups to that administrative and uh, enforcement actions, but I'll submit those for the record. My time has expired, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.